It is about 74 BC in Antionum, where wicked Zoramites have cast the poor out of their synagogues. Alma the Younger and Amulek teach the humble people how to exercise faith in Jesus Christ. Based on actual events as recorded in the Book of Mormon, another testament of Jesus Christ. bow down to idols. They have fallen into grave errors and no longer keep the commandments of God. They pervert the ways of the Lord. We also fear that they will enter into a correspondence with the Lamanites, which would be the means of a great loss for us. What should we do? The preaching of the word has a great tendency to lead the people to do that which is just. It has had more powerful effect upon the minds of the people than the sword or anything else. Let us try the virtue of the word of God. and a perverse people. Their hearts are set upon gold, silver, and upon all manner of fine goods. They worship in a manner which I have never beheld. Their hearts are lifted up in great boasting in their pride. Oh, how long, O oh Lord, would thou suffer that thy servants shall dwell here below in the flesh, to behold such gross wickedness among the children of men? Lord, my heart is exceedingly sorrowful. 
Wilt thou comfort my soul in Christ? Lord, wilt thou grant unto me that I may have strength, that I may suffer with patience these afflictions which shall come upon me because of the iniquity of this people? O Lord, wilt thou comfort my soul and give unto me success and also my fellow laborers who are with me? Yea, wilt thou comfort their souls in Christ? Wilt thou grant unto them that they may have strength, that they may bear their afflictions which shall come upon them because of the iniquities of this people? O Lord, wilt thou grant unto us that we may have success in bringing them again unto thee in Christ? O Lord, their souls are precious, and many of them are our brethren. Therefore, give unto us, O Lord, power and wisdom, that we may bring these, our brethren, again unto thee. Observe the performances of the church, to continue in prayer and supplication unto God daily, that she might not enter into temptation. And what shall these, my brethren, do? They are despised of all men because of their poverty, especially by our priests. They have cast us out of our synagogues, which we have labored abundantly to build with our own hands. They cast us out because of our exceeding poverty. And now we have no place to worship our God. What shall we do? Do you suppose that you cannot worship God save it be in your synagogues only? Do you suppose that you must not worship God only once in a week? It is well that you are cast out of your synagogues, that you may learn wisdom. For it is because you are cast out that you are brought to a lowliness of heart. For you are necessarily brought to be humble. And now, because you are compelled to be humble, blessed are ye. For a man sometimes, if he is compelled to be humble, seeketh repentance. And now surely whosoever repenteth shall find mercy. And he that findeth mercy and endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. And because you were compelled to be humble, you were blessed. Do you not suppose that they are more blessed who truly humbled themselves because of the word? Yea. He that truly humbleth himself, repenteth of his sins, and endureth to the end, the same shall be blessed. There are many who do say, If thou wilt show unto us a sign from heaven, then we shall believe. Now I ask, is this faith? Nay. Faith is not to have a perfect knowledge of things. Therefore, if ye have faith, ye hope for things which are not seen, which are true. Now, God imparteth his word by angels unto men. Yea, not only men, but women also. Now, this is not all. Little children do have words given unto them many times, which confound the wise and the learned. Now, as I said concerning faith, that it was not a perfect knowledge, even so it is with my words. You cannot know of their surety at first unto perfection any more than faith is a perfect knowledge. If ye will experiment upon my words and exercise a particle of faith. Yea, even if ye can no more than desire to believe, let this desire work in you until you can give place for a portion of my words. We will compare the word unto a seed. If ye give place that a seed may be planted in your heart, behold, if it be a true seed or a good seed, if ye do not cast it out by your unbelief that ye will resist the Spirit of the Lord, behold, it will begin to swell 
within your breasts. And when you feel these swelling motions, you begin to say within yourself, it must needs be that this is a good seed or that the word is good for it beginneth to enlarge my soul. Yea, it beginneth to enlighten my understanding. Yea, it beginneth to be delicious to me. And now behold, is your knowledge perfect? Yea, your knowledge is perfect in that thing. And as the tree beginneth to grow, you will say, let us nourish it with great care that it may get root, that it may grow up and bring forth fruit unto us. But if ye neglect the tree and take no thought for its nourishment, behold, it will not get any root. And when the heat of the sun cometh, it withers away and you cast it out. Now, this is not because the seed was not good, but it is because your ground is barren and you will not nourish the tree. If you will not nourish the word, looking forward with an eye of faith to the fruit thereof, you can never pluck of the fruit of the tree of life. But if you will nourish the word by your faith, with great diligence and with patience, looking forward to the fruit thereof, it shall take root. And behold, it shall be a tree springing up unto everlasting life. And because of your diligence and your faith, and your patience with the word and nourishing it, that it may take root in you. Behold, by and by, ye shall pluck the fruit thereof, and ye shall feast upon this fruit even until ye are filled. But ye hunger not, neither shall ye thirst. Then ye shall reap the rewards of your faith, and your diligence, patience, and long suffering waiting for the tree to bring forth fruit unto you. Shall we believe in one God, that we might obtain this fruit? Also, in what manner should we plant the seed or exercise our faith? Do you remember what Zenos, the prophet of old, has said concerning prayer or worship? He said, Thou art merciful, O God, for thou hast heard my prayer when I was in the wilderness, and in my field, and when I did turn unto my closet. Yea, and thou hast also heard me when I have been cast out and have been despised by mine enemies. And it is because of thy son that thou hast been merciful unto me. Therefore, I will cry unto thee in all mine afflictions, for in thee is my joy. For thou hast turned thy judgments away from me because of thy son. Do you believe those scriptures which have been written by them of old? Believe in the Son of God, that he will come to redeem his people, that he shall suffer and die to atone for their sins, and that he shall rise again from the dead, which shall bring to pass the resurrection, that all men shall stand before him to be judged at that last and judgment day according to their works. I desire that you shall plant this word in your hearts. And as it beginneth to swell, even so nourish it by your faith. And behold, it will become a tree springing up in you unto everlasting life. And then, May God grant unto you that your burdens may be light through the joy of his Son. Amen. Amen.
Ye have desired of my beloved brother that he should make known unto you what ye should do because of your afflictions. And he hath exhorted you unto faith and to patience. And we have beheld that the great question which is in your minds is, whether the word be in the Son of God, or whether there shall be no Christ. I will testify unto you of myself that these things are true. I do know that Christ shall come among the children of men to take upon him the transgressions of his people and that he shall atone for the sins of the world. For the Lord God hath spoken it. For according to the great plan of the eternal God, there must be an atonement made, or else all mankind must unavoidably perish. Yea, all are fallen and are lost and must perish, except it be through the atonement. And it is expedient that there should be a great and last sacrifice. Not a sacrifice of man, neither of beast. It shall not be a human sacrifice, but it must be an infinite and eternal sacrifice. This is the whole meaning of the law, every wit pointing to that great and last sacrifice. And that great and last sacrifice will be the Son of God. Yea, infinite and eternal. And thus he shall bring salvation to all those who shall believe on his name. This being the intent of this last sacrifice, to bring about the bowels of mercy, which overpowereth justice and bringeth about means unto men, that they may have faith unto repentance. And thus mercy can satisfy the demands of justice and encircles them in the arms of safety, while he that exercises no faith unto repentance is exposed unto the whole law of the demands of justice. May God grant unto you that ye may begin to exercise your faith unto repentance, that ye begin to call upon his holy name, that he would have mercy upon you. Cry unto him for mercy, for he is mighty to save. Humble yourselves and continue in prayer unto him. Let your hearts be drawn out to him in prayer continually for your welfare and the welfare of those around you. After ye have done all these things, if ye turn away the needy and naked, and visit not the sick and afflicted, and impart of your substance, if ye have, to those who stand in need, behold, your prayer is in vain. This life is the time for men to prepare to meet God. The day of this life is the day for men to perform their labors. I beseech of you that ye do not procrastinate the day of your repentance until the end. For ye cannot say when you are brought to that awful crisis that I will repent, that I will return to God. Nay, ye cannot say this. For that same spirit which doth possess your bodies at the time that ye go out of this life, that same spirit will have power to possess your body in that eternal world. Contend no more against the Holy Ghost, but receive it and take upon you the name of Christ and worship God in whatsoever place ye may be in, in spirit and in truth, and that ye live in thanksgiving daily for the many mercies and blessings which he doth bestow upon you. Amen. Amen.